tell you what, it's going to be another close encounter, this one I feel. And we'll run quickly through the team. So Archbishop, Centre Moot, Bellin up with Alfie Sawyers, Ben Brocklebank, Keegan Young, Josh Chapman Hill, Charlie Bibby, in the hearts it's Evan Adamson and Ellis Chapman, Spencer George, Billy McGee and Alfie Ebert and Albany uh, in the front row. Ashton Blanchard, George McKean and Leon Trenwell make up the back row. And then it's a lengthy bench of Josh Lyon, Charlie McBride, Tommy Hancock, Alex Salton, Taylor Drinkhall, Corey Shepherd, and Lawson Edwards. And then if we look at the Castleford Academy side, they line up with Tyler Sharp, Alte Altsiljak, Jacob Longdon, Alfie Steele, Alfie Smith, and at halfback it's Jacob Hardy, Brindley Bellwood, uh, front row of Kai Addy, Travis Moss, and Clayton Dwyer, back row of Jaden Pollitt, Jack Egley, and Reese Burr, and it's a bench of Will Jex, Tommy Carroll, Robbie Smith, and Harley R. So this one is 25 minutes each way, uh, and already fierce tackling from Castleford Academy. I'm Dave Parkinson, alongside Steve McCormack, uh, and sent to be trying to play out of their own end there in the white, Castleford in those traditional colours. Let's see what they can come up with. Oh, I tell you what, what a hit that was. From the, the lad in the head guard, the number 13 for Cass Reese Firth. <coughs> Trapsing the round down here at Archbishop Centre Moon. Big tackle coming in once more from Jacob Hardy. And straight away they're on the attack, rolling forward, testing out Hardy again. Solid hit forward from George McKean. Work back into the middle. Long kick forward. It'll bounce favourably for Sharp. He picks his position, runs forward. And they're already up near the 40 metre line at Castleford Academy. Strong running here from Jaden Pollitt. Put down right on the halfway line, nil nil. Minute and a half into the action. What do you think we can expect of this one, Steve? I think we, it, we've shown exactly the first start of this game. It's just ferocious. You know, the, the, the Castleford start to the game, you know, just putting that marker down defensively. It's a real good attacking set from Archbishop Santa Maria to start off with. A real good kick. And then we're seeing exactly the same thing. So both teams just uh, found each other out. I think we're in for an absolute cracker. Clayton Dwyer put down on the 30 metre line over on the left hand side of the field. He'll be moved back to the middle. Kit will come in to complete the set. Oh, it's a high hanging one. Difficult one to take. Oh, he's judged that perfectly. That's a brilliant take, to be honest, from Charlie Bibby. Good kick from Hardy, wasn't it? You know, just a good, good end to that set. And as you said, you want your weakness to catch it on the full. And he was under some real pressure there. So he'll, he'll take some confidence for that because. You know, and we'll be uh, he'll be under pressure all the game with uh, with the half backs that Castleford's got. Uh, Billy McGee is the man who's moved into uh, dummy half. He's the smallest player on the field by some distance. Picks it up out of dummy half, shuffles the ball right, lovely pass. And we'll try and make some meters down the right hand side, but they're in the face of some some really strong defence. Three players chucked into that particular tackle. Liking the movement that they're doing already. Archbishop Centimere though, caught just outside their own 20, they're running out of tackles in this set. Last one has been signalled, going to have to kick from deep. And that's a reward for the effort. It bounces up quite tamely in the end there. For number five, Alfie Smith. You had to just duck a, a fierce looking challenge at in this way. <laughs> Picked up now by Tyler Sharp. Gets away from the first tackle, can't escape the clutches there of the, uh, the big Number eight for Archbishop Centre Alfie and Ombe. Some big collisions, isn't there? There is in, in, in this game. There you can see, you know, technically as well. You know, they're getting bodies on front. You know, you can see they're both well coached. And moving the ball wide, Castleford Academy. Just looked like they had them for numbers for a second there, but they mapped off particularly well. They have given away a penalty. Just uh, stretched a little bit too high there, the Ellis Chapman. The halfback being penalised, four minutes in. Nil-nil the score. Castleford hit the ball forward. 
onside surge from Jaden Pollitt. 22 metres away from the line. Now Firth follows up. Very direct forward. Five metres out from the line. Pop to the right hand side. Oh, nice work. Half back to full back. Can full back stretch out. Tyler Sharp. He's trying to force his way in. And that's some valiant defence on their own try line. Now a short ball for Firth. Firth seems to think he scored. And the referee agrees. This is going to be the opener. Really good effort there from Firth. And they have opened the score. Look, scoring here at Castleford Academy. Four and a half minutes in. Look at him off for a long run. Yeah, I, I thought originally they'd gone the wrong side here. Uh, but it took some score as well. Was, this was just power. You know, it was a nice little link up play previous to that with Jacob Hardy and, and Tyler Sharp with the inside ball. And that just got the defenders in, but a good pass from dummy half. You know, a real good pass from dummy half. That was Travis Morse. And just the power that, that he showed then just to get that ball over. A good team score from, from Cass. So, attempt on conversion. Four points to nil in favour of Castleford. I think that play, Jacob Hardy seems to have took a knock around his nose. There's nothing worse, is there? He's trying, oh, to, he's trying to clear it. I think even this early part of the game, you know, six minutes into the game, you're going to see how crucial he will be to this game. He was put a great kick in for the, the, the very first set. He's been instrumental in that play where he's, he's had a, a little show on going and, and linked up with his full back. I think we'll see, uh, we'll see him be a, one, of, one of the crucial players in this, in this side. Well, it was quite noticeable in the very first set. And I know half backs, no matter what, what age group you play, you know, no matter how old you are or whatever, as a half back, you get targeted to make up tackles, don't you? Because you know how effective usually you are with ball in hand. Um, but just in that first set, they tagged him three times and ran at him. Yeah. And he didn't back off. <laughs> no, he didn't. He did as uh, <laughs> great. So I always you know, use this Tommy Lula line, will you? You know, half back there. And, you know, you tend to tag him, you won't tag it, Tommy, because you know what you're going to get. And you get your ribs tickled. That's, that's what you know. get with Tommy, wouldn't you? So, you know, we call them what we call that like, spot players where you try and get a big man on, on, a, on a little man. Um, but the tough thing. And certainly. Um, so what we've seen so far, you know, even the half backs again from Archbishop Santa you know, tough, tough lads and whoever's running at him, I think they'll, uh, they'll be the, the utmost best. Oh, look, he's, he's, he's already going for an Andy Farrell pack in the nose job. Yeah, he'll be fine. So Hardy will step up to attempt this conversion. Four points to nil in favour of Castleford Academy. It's a very respectful crowd going silent for him. I like it. Could do with more of this, respectful crowds. Obviously one of the big things in the community game is enjoy the game which has been put forward and the flag's raised. And this is always a, an interesting age group because this is a scholarship age group. Yes, is when the professional clubs look to, to take like year 10s and year 11s onto their scholarship and I've been part of that, you know, co coaching wise as well and it's, it, the, the pro clubs do a fantastic job, you know, holistically looking after the players. But it's not the be-all and end-all. Yeah. You know, lads who don't get scholarships, you know, they, they've got good clubs, they work the schools like they are doing now. Uh, but it is a difficult age group at times, and this, the, the schools rugby league, is, is fantastic because it showcases every single one of them, as well as the community game. That's true, that's true. So it was uh, an opening score from Reese Fur, Castleford Academy back in possession, 6 them to the good, pushing their way forward. Travis Morse works it out with dummy half to Firth. Firth keeps the ball moving. 
down to the left hand side and the tackle came in a big one on Kayadi. I like that, playing right at the line. A second row was running into the hole. And I'm always interested to see second rowers at this sort of age group as well because, look, let, let's be honest, you know, it's not one of the, um, the glamour positions that is pushed in the game at the minute. Everybody wants to be a full-back or a, a standoff or a half-back. Yeah, no, I, I, I fully understand that, but great position. And the skill set of a back row is changing now, so you want your back row, as we've seen it in the game so far, you, know, you want them to be able to kick and pass and do everything rather than just being that, that battering ram. And we've seen some great examples so far of, of, of that in, in these games as well, so we need to, to keep encouraging the, 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 the young players to do that. They're almost like a third or fourth centre, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Oh, some solid defence. Excellent work from Castleford Academy. Ten minutes in, they lead by six points to nil. They're attacking with the defence. And they're just not being, they're not allowing uh, Archbishop Centenary to get their way forward. They've done a couple of passes just across the line. Now they'll pick up a few metres. That's better. That's a belting run. An excellent run forward there from Alfie and Ombi. Big Alfie will play it to Billy McGee and now it's kicked forward by Alfie Sawyers into the open spaces that are here at Kingston Park well picked up by the fullback Tyler Sharp sets a foot and run oh he's outstripped the defence he's down the ground he's over halfway can't beat his opposite number super tackle on Tyler Sharp by Alfie Sawyers up there on the front foot and looking really dangerous at the moment Castleford Academy 30 metres out from the line, switched into the middle. Here's Firth once more. So direct, so quick on the play of the ball. Now it's down the right hand side. Runs a long way before throwing that pass. Nice centre play. Chance here. Good cover tackle. What a cover tackle that was. And have, have it on. Now run forward by Eggley. Two metres out from the line. Last tackle signal here. Brinkley Bell would want it, but it goes back to Jacob Hardy. Hardy hoists that ball. That's a great kick. It'll bounce, it'll bobble, it'll go in the end goal. Someone needs to get it, and it's gone the way of Archbishop Centre who find themselves running and tight, uh, down the, uh, the tightrope of the touchline. Yeah, it's end to end, isn't it? Initially started off a, a, an outstanding break from Tyler, Tyler um, Sharp down that left edge, the full back, collected the kick, but it was a good kick again, this from Hardy, and an onside chase. And yeah, one thing you don't want to do is let that ball bounce, but you know, I think you, you've got to give an awful lot of credit to Brocklebank from Archbishop Centre move. He just snuffed that danger out, unfortunately got put into touch, but if he wasn't there, it would have been a definite score, so that was great play by him. So I will look to play this back to Travis Moss, he'll pass right, nice footwork coming in there from Kai Abbey, held up five metres from the line, can Castleford Academy get themselves over, Eggley goes again, nice footwork from him. And he goes very direct. Initially it was all footwork, then he straightened up. Picked up out of dummy half by Moss. That's a great tackle. That is brilliant from Spencer George. Dragging him back inside the field of play. Eggley, under pressure, gets the pass left. It continues going that way through half backs and Hardy shuffles it out in the end. Good run back to the middle. Ball goes loose from the challenge. Referee has decided there's a penalty there. Can't go stealing the ball in that way. Not in the eyes of our match official anyway. What a tackle this is. No. This was a definite, definite try. And oh, no. Spencer. They're going so close to the line here, just about held up by Castleford Academy. Archbishop Centre Moo, manning the barricades. Sharp goes so close, he's playing back amongst the halfbacks. Nice run there from Hardy, can't stretch out, this is valiant stuff to be honest. From Archbishop centre me. can they hold out? Travis Morse goes again, they do hold out. 
14 minutes gone, six points to nil. Wave after wave of attack, it's disrupted. Just holding on, aren't they? They are just, just holding, holding on. on. But third play, you know, there's been a couple of attempted dive overs, and one thing you don't want to do is score or let your opposition score from dummy half. And that just goes to show the effort that this Archbishop Centre team's got because they're under massive pressure here and playing the ball down the right hand side as well. Getting close. Morse to Hardy. Long ball. Short pass now. He's not going to get it. Yeah, That's some great defence there on Harley off. And that, that takes from doing that because the pressure they've been under and, and probably for the, the majority of this game so far, repeat set, penalty repeat set, and then they've had that effort and that teamwork to get them over the sideline. You know, and, and this cast of the team's putting them under an awful lot of pressure every single play of the ball. And that that's brilliant play. So Archbishop Centre Mary Dale appreciate getting hold of this ball. Alfie Enombi, he's been good on field, he has been good, good with his carries, very direct, try and work the way out, liking that, there was a 2 on 1 for a second, out on that right hand centre. It was Josh Chapman Hill down that side, now he's brought back to the middle, little dummy thrown over the 40 metre line to go, the Archbishop centre move, trailing by 6 points to nil. McGee out of dummy half, passes, picks up his fullback Sawyers, who picks up that big figure, again rolling forward, Anombi. Anombi inside 40. To McGee. And McGee moves it left. Nice little link up play. That pass seems to go forward, however, and he will get called back. They're getting very excited in the crowd as the run comes in from Charlie Bibby, but it is all going to come to nothing. Encouraging though, wasn't it? Really encouraging that. No, it just goes to show when they get this field position, little show and go. Good link up play from Alpha Sawyers. And it was probably just forward. It's a line ball. Touch just right in the, the correct position again. But that's just just a bit of a nudge to this Castleford Academy side to say, listen, you know, we we you give us a lot of pressure. We put some effort in. And if you give us the opportunities, we're gonna test you as well and um Real good effort from that. I think it was a bit unfortunate with that one. And this is a different sort of game again, isn't it, Steve? You know, so we've seen, you know, uh, Archbishop Centre move. They've been on the ropes. They've been like that boxer that's just been taking hit after hit after hit, and they're chewing up. And they must be building their confidence massively in the way that they defended. Definitely. And there's no doubt that they've had spells like this in the in the you know the games leading up to this final as well. You know, it looks have been all you know all uh, positives for them. So to get to this final shows that they've got to have some resilience in the team and they've definitely definitely shown that in the early part of this, uh, this, this 18 minutes. Nice forward from Firth again, he's been a standout for Castleford Academy. Brought down this right hand side, good carry, forceful carry from Addy to that 40 metre line. Travis Morse in field to Firth again, so direct but I'm really liking what I've seen of uh, Reese Firth so far, been really good. 30 metres out from the line, kick forward by Bellwood. It hangs in the air, taken just right on his try line. The chase was pretty good as well, it's trapped him inside his own 10 metre mark. And Archbishop centre move, trailing by six. Can they build their way out of their own 20 in this set? Can they ask some questions maybe down the other end? They're very positive, they're very quick in the running through the play of the balls. As McGee, long pass left. Rolled forward, Spencer George to play it, on the 30 metre line, McGee pops it left, that's a forceful challenge if ever there was one. Keeps on Taylor during call, kick to come in, clearing his lines, Alfie Sawyers, oh it's allowed to bounce, well picked up however by Jack Eggley. He's popped up in a few unusual positions, hasn't he, Eggley? He's, he has. He's definitely a very game of work. I he has. As, as soon as that ball let, left the kicker's hands, he's on the move. You know, he wasn't stood still. And, and that's what you want your players to do. Obviously, the ball bounces in, in different ways. And he's, like I said, he's popped up in really important positions. 
to be fair though, the, he's popping up in positions that you don't expect a second rower to come. I, I, don't, I feel like I've gone on, on, in second row man so far because I've, I've just highlighted that play in this game, haven't I? But doing really good so far, loving the efforts in this game. Six points nearly in favour of Castleford Academy. It's a game that's uh, several minutes in now. I'm just looking at I've not sat my stopwatch either, which is absolutely a good sign. As the ball goes high. Oh, that's a hanging one. Well taken again by Anthony Sawyers. Been impressed with the back three of, of um, Archbishop sent to me. When we say a back three, it's the, the full back and, and, and the two wingers because Hardy's put some really, really difficult kicks in and they've caught them on every occasion. Not only caught them, they beat the first man and got their team on the front foot and that enables us to, to, to see what's happening now where they're, they're getting some good yards. I think the back three has been real good. Hopefully don't worry in that last play by Spencer George now. They're giving it a bit of air down this left hand side. Keegan Young with a, just a, a, a glance of an opening. Wrestled down by that man Egley. And again they come forward. Tough little run there from Charlie McBride. On uh, a dummy half is Tommy Hancock. One kick downfield. Fielded by Harley Orr. Oh, did well then. Look very composed as he eased himself down the ground. Now a dummy half run. A settler, he's just got on the field as that player, so <laughs> they're always like nervous. Your very first carries, you don't want to make an error. That was Tommy Carroll on the charge. Up towards halfway. 21 or so minutes gone in this game. Six points to nil. Tight as a drum. Oh, what a hit! That was a brilliant defensive effort on that far side uh, by number five, Ben Brockleban. Twice he's done that. You know, he, he wasn't going to sit back, Brockleban, then and just wait for that play to happen. And we've got a replay of this now. You know, just ball's gone to the left and he's just fired right off his touchline. And the one thing that Cass Academy have done is they've used um, Tyler Sharp really well in that link up play. And the impressive bit about it is Ben Brocklebanks identified that and thought, you're not doing it again to us. And that's a real good play. Smart play. Still six points to nil. Archbishop sent to me just on the halfway line, playing it down his left hand side now. Good link up. We're full back Sawyers. Down to this centre. Keegan Young is starting to grow into the game. Sawyers moving the ball in field. Hancock gets rid of it quickly. I'm not sure how much his supporting player expected the pass. Charlie McBride had nowhere to go. Hancock, under pressure, finds Sawyers. Starting to evolve himself a bit more is Sawyers now. Corey Shepard plays it on the 30 metre line. It's nice to see him coming into the game. That looked like a laboured pass, however, down that right hand side. Still remains six points to nil. Sawyers chipping into the corner. Oh, it's ball back on the foot. I like the idea there. Didn't quite get the execution right, but it was good thinking to get the ball in behind the defence. Yeah, it's definitely a go to man, isn't it? Um, Sawyers, you know, foot the full back and he's linked up on both sides, both right and left, so he's like the indicator where the ball's going to go in in attack. And I think you're right. I think it was the right idea, just the execution. But again, they're in a good position here. That's just a sentiment to put some pressure on like they had a big hit there and see if they can get this cast of the team to come up with another error. We're still very much in a settling period of this game, aren't we? We're still feeling each other out. That's Castleford Academy bring it out towards their own 40 metre line. Firth makes himself available, he's played behind him and Eckley follows up, does well to ride the challenge. Seems to go a little bit high in him, to be honest. In the first instance from George McKean. Nothing said by our match official. Oh, and that's a real mess up at Dummy Half, unfortunately. For Taylor Drinkall. Uh, sorry, for Tommy Carroll. He put himself in the position uh, and just coughed, just coughed it up, unfortunately. Yeah, they've done it a few times now, hasn't it? Was it e Evan Adamson from the Archbishop? Just putting that pressure on, I think he's been real good. He's been, again, you know, really a uh, key indicator with when, when they've got the ball, but on that occasion, big hit and again they just uh, failed to get to the kick and just gives Archbishop Santamu that opportunity again to put some, some pressure on this defensive line. That was a brave run from McBride, there's 
Ball away to the right hand side, very scrappy, but it's ended up going into the arms of Josh Chapman Hill. The defence coach with his uh, attempted to get round. Another bobbly pass picked up by Ashton Blanchard. It's nice to see him coming a little bit more into this game rather than just defending all the time, as we saw in the uh, much of the first 20 minutes. Six points to nil in favour of Castleford Academy. Rolling forward, however, looking a bit more menacing on this occasion. Leon Trenwolf. It's a great name, that. What a name for a rugby league player. Down the left-hand side it comes. Kick over the top by Adamson. Well taken. Oh, he's in a bit of a gap. Adamson chases back well, however, just to close it. Apparently all that, just taking that ball under real pressure. Again, just a real good little bit of skill. But he was up to it, you know, Harley. Oh, just took that ball and, and just, again, just alleviated that little bit of pressure from this this team. And there are big carries in this stage of the game. Firth moving his way forward for Castleford Academy. Can't say, uh, again, how much I, I've really enjoyed watching Firth play. He's taking the left-hand side. There's a bit of space opening up. Excellent work. It's with that centre on the far side. He's stepping in field. The defence is just about caught up with him. Sawyers gets across to make that tackle. Uh, and Alfie Steele it was who made the break down that side. Nice link up play. Doesn't quite go to hand. Picked up, however, by Jacob Hardy. He weaves his way towards the 20. Castleford Academy on the front foot again. Hardy, off to the full back sharp, 10 metres away from the line, Eglin makes himself available on the right but it goes left to Hardy, Hardy puts boots on ball, it's a good kick as well, someone's going to have to attack that, ah oh, he's come up with that, brilliantly, brilliantly down that side is Josh Chapman Hill. Yeah Chapman Hill uh, that was under immense pressure as well that, oh, we mentioned previously about the back three, you know winger and full back, they've been brilliant, they've been absolutely brilliant because that's a really good kick from Hardy. He's got onside chase, they're aggressive, they're putting real, under real pressure, and he's just put to it. Yeah, that's brilliant play. And on be running, picks up another hard fought seven metres. Six points to nearly still the score in favour of Castleford Academy. Archbishop sent to move, going forward from inside their own half. Now, there is a stoppage here for. I think it looks like another knock that's been picked up by uh, a Castleford Academy player, a head knock. I think it's Robin Smith, I think he's alright. I think, again, the teacher, medical staff just run straight on, referee stop play. He's looking like he's okay, which is great news. Yeah, he's all good. I think you've probably got to give Castleford Academy a lot of credit for the defence as well, mm. because, to be fair, they've had a lot tripped out of this last... 10 minutes and even though there's been some good play they've never really looked like they're going to get broken down um, well, well for me the, the, the year 8 boys final was all about the attack um, you know you end up describing a game that finishes 20 all and you know that, that, that was brilliant from an attacking point of view this has been all about the defence at both sides and the way that they both stuck at the task but there's still not a lot between them is there no definitely not High kick coming in from Sawyers. Oh, blimey. Can Sharp get near it? Sharp backs off it. And then it's allowed to bounce. And who's there? Really quick to pick it up. But uh, Tommy Hancock, he's eventually tackled to the floor and loses it on contact. But uh, I'll tell you what, he had to put himself in the frame. And I really like the way that they applied pressure with that kick. I know it's going to be turnover possession in the end. And it's perhaps not as deep as you might have wanted it. But... They made it a contest, and that's what they I did. like about. Originally, it was I think it was Reese Firth that put the pressure on, but again, you just look at this now. It's again a good carry. Again, there's three players in there. They're getting the bodies in front. As you mentioned, it's more defensive this game, um, and then the game's probably played in this middle third as well. So there's they've not had a lot of good ball on both sides. So it's just a matter of getting that field position, and then the strike players from both sides just having a go to. Dwight just dragged back by his uh, his own collar. Firth moves in, 
Passes out there on the right hand side. The ball's on the movement again. Lofty pass over the top. And not quite sure what Harley was thinking there. He's pretty under loads of pressure. He slipped it over his shoulder. They've kicked it forward. A real chance here for Centenary, but it's gone over the touch line. Kick forward there by Charlie Bibby. You can understand why, because that is all that we've got time for. We're also the final player. Uh, they just pushed and harried and harassed as best as they could. But it's just ended up six points to nil at half time. Just a one try. Yeah, real good. You know, different time for getting than the previous ones during the day. I just think defensively both sides were really, really good. I think the way that Castleford Academy started, it was obvious that Jacob Hardy was going to put some good kicks in there. You know, Tyler Sharp was going to be linking up. But saying that, you've got 